What's up, party people? We're back. We're going to do a bit of a tech deep dive today. I'm going to show you how to trigger the uh, voice AI calls using a webhook request. So this is how to trigger the calls from make.com, um, more or less. So we're going to jump in here, and I'm going to show you how to trigger the calls. from that. That is not how that's supposed to look. Let me just clone that real quick clone that real quick we're gonna trigger the calls with a webhook request coming from right here we're gonna be looking at the VAPI API documentation so that you know how to trigger a custom call from make.com let's go there's several ways that you can do this I'm gonna show you guys a couple of little secrets the search for ask up here you can ask VAPI anything how to create the webhook request for an outbound call. And then VAPI will tell you. VAPI is not always the easiest to follow though. You could get VAPI's responses and put it into ChatGPT or Claude and go back and forth until you figure it out. You can give ChatGPT all of the API documentation from VAPI and say, here, help me figure out how to make an outbound call using a webhook request. Mm -hmm. Or you can just watch this video and we'll do something together. Don't always rely on YouTube videos, though, when you have AI assistance that can get you the answer just as quickly. And if you learn how to do it yourself, you won't have to ask assistance or me on the Internet. You can just do it. So the goal is to get you to learn how to do it. Here's a big reason why you should learn how to do it. There is a huge labor, labor shortage on the market for people who can do it. So if you want an opportunity to get paid, learn how to prompt engineer, learn how to put together these webhook requests, and learn like some basic automations, and we'll hook you up, okay? I know people who want you. Uh, you, can go, you can go anywhere and, and say, hey, this is what I can do. Make a little YouTube video, put your portfolio together. And somebody's going to be like, oh, my goodness, you're so cool. Please help me. Because that's what they say to me. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so there's there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Like I said, you can ask Vappy. I didn't just re read Vappy's response. I'm so sorry, Vappy. Um, I actually... It'll give us a good place to start. Let's try it again. Um, make me the webhook request... Or an okay. outbound call. Oh, yeah. Also, everybody on YouTube, you can't see my screen, but I do have a couple of my team members here with me. We have uh, an audience today, so you may hear um, other folks I'm talking to, which is normal. I do talk to myself, yes, but today I am not talking to myself. We are talking to other human beings. Hello, Lillian. Hello, Maria. Hi, guys. Hi. There we go. Okay. This, when you look at this, this is confusing. Nobody, nobody really wants to read all that. Uh, I should tell it. But there's, there's some key notes that you, that you can get from here. The HTTPS, this URL here, and the post method, you can see... <clears throat> we're making a post method with the HTTP request or yeah, well, HTTP request, you know, you see post URL post URL, your header, you need an authorization bearer and then your API key. So this API key can be found on your dashboard. Here, I'll go ahead, go ahead and just show you that real quick too. Cause I know you guys like to ask questions and I like to give some answers. API key right there. So, oops, where are we at? Authorization, bearer, token. Again, token can be found on the dashboard. It's your API key. Your spelling is very important. Don't miss that authorization is spelled authorization. That's something I accidentally missed the other day. Oops. Bearer, space, token. Bearer has to be with a capital B. B, exact. Authorization, bearer, token. Okay, those that, that's your headers. Now, Make already has 
an option where you can select the body type and you can choose JSON application. That is coming from here. The body type, this says content type, but it's the same thing. Content type, application, JSON. So on make we choose body type, it's a raw body. Oh, the raw body is just so you can put like the webhook together here, but the content type, again, JSON. Those are, those are just options that you get to choose. The body type just allows you to put a request body in here with raw information. Okay. <clears throat> and then what comes after data is, is what actually goes inside the raw body. This is, we don't need all this information. I honestly don't really like the way it looks. We're going to use, we're pretty much going to use, use this over here. And what's cool is that people actually let you put in the information you need and the body, and it's going to make a custom API um, webhook for you. So we'll just, we'll just start with some stuff. I do want the background noise. Background is office. Um, dial pad function. Do we need the AI assistant to be able to dial on a pad? Like press one to go to, does it have to do that? No, mine doesn't. Not today. False. Um, and if I need it to later, I'll turn it on. Um, in call function enabled. Do I want the AI assistant to be able to end the call itself? Um, sure. True. Um, how does it know when it needs to end the call? It's going to say something like, this is the message that the assistant will say if it ends the call. If unspecified, it will hang up without saying anything. So, so again, like all of the, throughout this whole thing, like you have little icons that tell you what each of these steps are. If you just take your time and read through this slowly, I promise that you will you will eventually understand what it says and the sooner you understand how to do this yourself the quicker you can start to build like really cool custom assistants and um, I don't know whether you're a hobbyist freelancer owner whoever you are these skills are incredibly important we are we're going to be using AI like for, from now into the future. <laughs> so it, now is the time to, to pick up on these skills and understand like what the potential is or find somebody to hire directly on your team who is dedicated to learning how to use cool AI tools and working with, with API. Um, API is just how we connect the different pieces together. So we get applications to be able to speak to each other and interact. Um, this is the whole basis of automation. So if you if you want to be able to streamline your tasks and stop doing the same manual activities over and over and over again, learn a little bit of automation. Um, learn how AI assistants can like just make your life better. Um, it does take work up front. It does take learning. So it's going to take some more time to get to where you want to go. But if you put the work in now, you're going to be happy later. I will be transparent. I work 16 hours a day. And I have worked 16 hours a day for the last like seven months, but it's because I love this stuff. I don't necessarily have to, but to be able to keep up and build like the really cool stuff that I'm building, that's what I did. I got in when there were no tutorials, there was no help. It was just, I had to jump in. Now I'm hoping to help speed up that process for everyone else. I've already done staff training and now I'm training my own internal team so that we can all do this together. So I don't have to do it by myself. But I have had friends in, in the journey with me. There's a couple other company owners who I've worked closely with to, you know, build build a lot of this together. So I haven't been all alone. Shouts out, Chase. If you're watching this, I love you. Okay. Anyways, in call message string. This is a message that the assistant will say at the end of the call. Um, thanks for chatting. Have a great day. And call phrases. Let's see what that does. This list contains phrases that, if spoken by the assistant, will trigger the call to be hung up. Case insensitive. Okay, cool. So let's say, um, I hope this was all helpful, comma, I'm going to hang up now. Sweet. 
This list contains phrases that have spoken by the assistant will trigger the call. What is this one? This is the message that the assistant will say if it ends the call. If unspecified, it will hang up without saying anything. I really don't... I know this that this is what it says to hang up the call, and I guess this is what it says like when it's doing that function, like when it's getting ready to hang up the call, it'll actually like say this and then end. I could just leave that empty and it won't say anything. It'll just hang up after this, but whatever. First message. The first message that the assistant will say, this is also, this can also be a URL to a containerized audio file. Oh, I didn't know that. So you could just pre-record a, a URL and just drop it right into the first message. Oh, and the reason you might do that is so that you have a consistent, like, sounding first message. The AI will, will occasionally sound a little different um, when, like, it's not always going to be consistent and say say its phrases the exact same way. So if there's, like, a very particular way you want that first message to sound and come out, you can just, like, put in a, a call, a, another MP3 recording. Um, so first message is, hey there, um, this is... Carson calling on a recorded line. For compliance reasons, I like to let everybody know that these calls are being recorded, and I also typically let them know that this is an AI assistant so that they don't feel duped, so that they don't feel swindled when they realize, oh, this is AI. But most people are like, oh, this is really cool, especially if you kind of pre-let them know that this is, this is AI and it's really cool. Um, everybody... They're going to have their own feelings about it. But this is Carson calling on a recorded line. Um, inner forwarding number. So the AI assistants can forward calls in the middle of the conversation, which is dope. Um, this is the number to forward to if the issue assistant runs into issues. I am not going to do call forwarding. We don't use that for this one. You can provide a set of phone numbers to forward to. You want to tell the assistant when to use each of these numbers in the system prompt. I actually didn't know you could add multiple phone numbers, which is really cool for when you're working in like a situation where the assistant might want to forward to the sales department or the marketing department or this specific like person's office number. Oh my goodness, that is huge, guys. That is like a huge use case right there. Anyways, HIPAA enabled. You can turn on HIPAA and turn it off. Um, this is going to be important for people who really need like high, high measure of, of data security. Um, we do want calls to be recorded, though. We, we want all the stuff, so we're going to leave that as false. LM request delay. What does this do? The minimum number of seconds to wait after punctuation before sending a request to the LLM. It's just going to default to 0.01. That's fine. Max duration. This is the maximum number of seconds that the call will last. When the call reaches its duration, it'll end. So if you don't want calls to last more than five minutes, turn this on. If you want people to just be able to go on and on and on, leave it off. I don't want people to go on and on and on forever, so we're going to make it a max of 10 minutes. This is in seconds, so 600 seconds, 10 minutes. Let's see, metadata object. This is the metadata associated with the call. Hmm. Enter key of new property. It seems like this is something cool that can be done. I want to add address, and I it might be here that I'm supposed to add it. I don't know. I'm not quite sure yet, but we're going to figure that out. I, I haven't really passed metadata through in this way yet. This is the metadata associated with the call. Yeah, we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to try it. We're going to try it. I, I don't think that this is what, what I'm supposed to be doing. And it keeps kind of exiting out so oh no I, oops my bad oops my bad sorry guys oops there we go uh so we're just gonna leave that empty for now model one let's read it these are the options for the assistance llm fallback number one so if the first llm is not functioning property or properly it's just gonna fall back to these ones i'm just gonna use open ai it's consistent so we're good. This is the max number of tokens the assistant will be allowed to generate in each turn of conversation. So if you don't want the assistant to be able to say more than like 100 words, I mean 250 tokens is just over 100 words at a time, you can turn that down. But if you need it to like spit off really long phrases, whatever, you can turn that up. Messages array. The starting. This is the starting state for the conversation. I, okay, 
So we can add, we can change the role. We're going to use assistant. Um, assistant means that the, the content that you put into the raw body or the, the content section, the prompt that you give, it's going to be a prompt for the assistant. Um, you could change this to be a system prompt if you're doing, if you're using like the voice AI for other, to, to make system actions or a function prompt for other, this, this is mostly going to be for like people developing software or developing video games and putting, putting voice assistants in to be able to do like extra cool development stuff. You're mostly going to be using assistant. User would mean that whatever you put into the content section is the assumed um, responses of the user. So this is what the user would be saying to the assistant. And you can kind of, you can kind of fine tune this to understand like what, what, what would your assistant like respond with? I know that might not have been very clear right now. I can't think of a better way to put it. So my apologies, but you're using assistant, just turn on assistant. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Content string. This is, this is actually the I wish that they had put some, some more explanation into this I token here, but this is the content that you want the assistant to know about. So this is like your prompt. I'm just going to go ahead and copy some, some prompt from over here real quick. Uh, assistant. Oh, I don't have anything already built. All right. Let's just, let's just take, um, we're just going to take some of this. I am going to block this. Sorry guys. Can't can't reveal can't reveal this yet, my bad. Okay. Where did oh I wanted to I'm actually gonna paste it in here first just to kinda make sure it looks decent. Okay. Boom. We are going to put this in here. Alright. We have the whole prompt in this bad boy. It's it's in there. Anyways, that's content. Function call object. We're gonna we're gonna get into function calling eventually, but for now we are not. For now we are not. <clears throat> Tool calls array. Same, like we're gonna have to ask Vappy how to how to do this stuff. Um but let me just I don't need tool calls array. Uh, function call. All right. This is the basic. You just need content assistant. Cool. Model. We're going to use GPT. We'll use three turbo for this 3.5 turbo provider. Open AI. Semantic caching Boolean. Um, add example value. I don't know what this add example value button does. So I'm going to click it real quick because I'm curious. Oh, mm -hmm. example value is true. I don't really remember what semantic caching is at this moment, but again, something that I would just ask, hey, actually, look, what is semantic caching and how is it used? <laughs> oh, well, semantic caching is the context of VAPI in the context of VAPI, is a feature that enables the caching of semantic information to optimize performance. It is used to enhance responsiveness and efficiency of voice assistance by caching certain semantic information, which can speed up processing and reduce latency in voice interactions. This feature is particularly useful in scenarios where similar queries or commands are executed frequently, as it allows the system to retrieve responses faster without needing to process the same information repeatedly. In the VAPI platform, semantic caching can be enabled for an assistant, indicating the system leverages cached semantic data to improve performance and use experience love that we're gonna make that true turn that bad boy on uh temperature this is so th if you know anything about um prompting with like any of the the ai assistants the temperature controls the level of creativity that the assistant has and whether or not it's gonna like hallucinate like crazy so zero is it's gonna stick as close to your instructions as possible two is gonna be it is like super creative it's gonna it's gonna say whatever it wants to say we're going to make it a point 0.7. Point 0.7 is pretty, pretty like standard default. Um, and I don't know what, what options I have to put under this, this new property here. It's just something. Oops. I, I do want to turn that back on. My bad. Point 0.7. We're good. 
it probably defaults to 0.7 anyways. Um, oh, default is zero to leverage caching. This is the temperature that we use for the calls. Default is zero to leverage caching for lower latency. Hmm. Cool. I'm actually going to maybe turn it down a bit then. We'll see. That's something to play with, you know. One of those things that you might want to just shoot. One of those things that you might just want to play with a little bit. All right. We're still putting the, together the body. Which And I love that, that this is called the body because this is really what holds the assistant. So this is literally like we're building the body for your assistant. Anyways, name. This is the name of your assistant. The name of the assistant. This is just for your own reference. So because we, this data gets passed through in the end of call report. So if you want to know which assistant you're calling with, call him Carson. Number of words to interrupt the assistant. This is how many words it takes to get the assistant to actually stop talking. So you have to say several words to interrupt the assistant. That way the assistant's not just going to like stop talking when you say, mm-hmm, or, oh, okay. Uh, you actually have to get it to, to, you know, stop. It says words like stop, actually, no, will always interrupt immediately regardless of this value. Words like, okay, yeah, right, will never interrupt. So it understands the difference between just like affirm, uh, affirmative speech. Like, you know, some people will just say, mm-hmm, oh, yeah, like while you're talking. It, it's going to know because it's so smart. She's a genius. We'll, we'll make it too. Recording enabled. Yes, we want that on so we can actually get a call recording. Response delay. The minimum number of seconds after user speech to wait before the assistant starts speaking. Defaults to 0.4. Um, this is supposed to be there to get the AI to like kind of wait a minute before talking, but I'm like, don't wait, just go, just go server messages. These are the messages that will be sent to your server URL. Default is end of call report, status update, hang function call. I want the end of call report for now because I, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to see what happens at the end of the call. Um, I could turn some other stuff on. I know eventually I'm going to want status update because we'll be able to use this to determine whether somebody answered or didn't answer, which is going to be quite important for, for data tracking purposes. But for now, I'm just going to only do shoot for now. I'm just going to only do end of call report. Be wary because if you turn on, um, if you turn on transcript, it's going to constantly send post requests to your server URL. And if you're using like something like make, um, it's going to send this in during the conversation and you can end up using like a hundred or 200 operations in one phone call. And, and, and you're not, you don't have any reason to need to be doing that. I don't know what phone call control is, but I'm kind of curious. So let's look it up. What is the phone call? They're like, like I said, they're constantly making updates to like all of this stuff. Like all of their resources are going into making this product better and better and cooler and cooler. And they're already the best product on the market. In my opinion, I have tried them all. I do have several partnerships in this space. I have been building with these things for seven months. So maybe my opinion is worth something. I don't know, but that be the go. Anyways, what is phone call control server message? Let's see. We learn together. The phone call control server message is one of the message types that can be sent to your server URL. The phone call message is specifically used for controlling aspects of the phone call directly from the server, allowing for advanced handling and interaction scenarios during a call. The ca this capability is part of what makes Vappy's platform versatile for developers looking to integrate sophisticated voice interactions within there. All right, well, that didn't really help me. So let's see. What is it used for? Give me an example, please. This capability allows for advanced handling. However, I must note the documentation provided does not contain a direct example of phone call control. For specific examples of how to implement this, I recommend checking the official VAPI documentation or contacting VAPI support. So this is just one of those things that I don't know. And nobody, well, I'm, I'm sure somebody knows, like, obviously it's in here for a reason. So I'll just ask the, there's a discord channel that has people who have more technical experience 
than I do. Obviously, like I've sold these systems, built these systems. I have a lot of like the sales and marketing background as well as the tech stuff, but I'm kind of that guy right in the middle. Like I bridge the gap between the technical pieces and the practical pieces to make this easy to leverage for clients and their customers. But the super technical stuff, like that's not me. That's not me, guys. Like I, I use I use AI to learn all of this stuff, and that's that's like what I'm here for. Um, like I'm pretty technical, but I don't I don't do any sort of like cu- custom app development. And when I don't know something, I'm not going to claim to know it. I'm going to just go to a, a Chat GPT or Claude. I actually really like Claude lately. So another pro tip, I think Claude is Claude is pretty cool. That's the anthrop- an- an- anthropic uh, version of. OpenAI is ChatGPT. It's Claude. Um, anyways, yeah, I don't know what that, that phone call control is, and that's fine. I don't need it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be for me anyways. Server URL, this is where we're going to send the end of call report or anything else. Um, this is the URL. This URL will communicate with via HTTP GET and POST requests. This is used for retrieving context, function calling, and end of call reports. All requests will be sent with the call object, among other things relevant to that message. You can find more details in the server URL documentation. This overrides the server URL set on the org and the phone number. Order of precedence, function, server URL, assistant, server URL, yada, yada, yada. Cool. So like I said earlier, we can add function calls to the assistant to be able to trigger specific actions. I'm not going to jump in the function calling today because it's it's if, if it is its whole own thing. But I will add this super server URL. I want to send the end of call report somewhere in Make. I'm going to send it. Oh no! Let me let me go back. This card changes. I'm going to send it here. I'm using Make.com to parse the transcript and do a bunch of cool stuff. I just read somebody on my YouTube comments recommended I set this up another way, so I'm actually going to go read those YouTube comments later and play around with this. This is really just something I kind of, like, you know, scraped together for this specific example, but I'm sure that there are better ways to do it. Again, like, just because I did it one way doesn't mean there's not another way to get it done. Anyways, server URL, this is the webhook. It's going to catch that end of call report. Here's our URL. Uh, we are going to paste that in. Actually, let me go ahead and copy that now. Copy. We are going to paste that in the server URL. So our end of call report will go here. Um, this is the secret you can set that VAPI will send with every request to your server. Will be sent as a header called VAPI secret. Um, this is cool if you need to like only allow actions to happen if this secret key is added as well it's something that you'd want to keep secret because if not then anybody can send information to your webhook if they have your webhook thankfully i block all of this information out so you can't see it but if i needed to put a secret key in here as well i could put a secret key in here as well but then i would also have to block that out anyways so it's irrelevant for me in this moment because either way i have to block both out uh you you only need the server url though Silence, timeout, and seconds. So this is how many seconds of silence to wait before ending the call. Um, that people will end if, if, if you don't say anything for more than 30 seconds. That might be a problem. Like, say, Vappy needs to wait to have the call transferred to somebody. Like, like say you get a gatekeeper, and they're like, all right, please hold. Um, I'm going to go get the boss. I have trained assistants to handle, like, overcoming gatekeepers and getting to the boss at the other end like it is possible so let your imagination go go free and have some fun um don't assume that ai can't have like a, a real conversation and convince people of the value of having a conversation like ai is pretty cool anyways transcriber so this is what um this is what's doing the speech to text and actually doing the transcription of the phone call we're going to use deepgram because that's what everybody uses what is this these keywords are passed to the transcription model to help it pick up use case specific words anything that may not be a common word like company name should be added here yeah so you can like just give it some additional additional context so that it it actually transcribes the conversation right so you could put like your company name in so when the assistant says your company name the transcription actually knows what your company name is um we don't really need that right now 
language is English. The model is, we're just gonna use Nova 2. Provider is DeepGram. Okay, cool. Um, voice, same thing. Oh, they don't have the other models in here. I mean, it's gonna just only let me pick Azure, which is weird for some reason, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of swap that out later. Voice ID, for now, we're just gonna kind of use what's, what's, what's already in here. Basic. This is the speed multiplier that will be used. We're not multiplying the speed. Actually, usually I, I make it slow down a little bit. So we're actually gonna 0 0.08. Ah, uh, we'll leave it at one for now, that's fine. All right, voicemail detection. So do we wanna detect whether the voicemail happened or not? Yeah, let's turn it on. This sets whether the system should detect voicemail. Defaults to true. Voicemail message. This is the message that the system will say if the call is forwarded to voicemail. If unspecified, it will hang up. I don't want it to leave a, a message, so I'm just gonna leave it blank, so it'll hang up. Okay, we just built an assistant. Yay! Now we need to give the assistant um, a phone number to call from, and that's gonna come from Twilio, but let's, uh, let's see if I can add that in here anywhere. And these are all just, again, these are all just instructions for, for what each of those pieces are. So you can go through here and understand. Just read, read through this documentation. This is pretty straightforward. Just more options, more options, more options. This is where you can learn what the transcriber is, your voice options. Oh, actually, I am going to select some of these voice options real quick. I want to see if I can... Um, yeah, like different, different, different voices, like 11 labs has other settings you can change. Um, I usually like to use play HT cause it has like really good emotional response and stuff. But all I would have to do is change the provider, change the speed or not, or change the provider. And then I can add in these different, um, these, so, so where this says speed here, I could add voice dot emotion, put that in between the brackets and then give whatever response is needed, which is one of these female, happy, female, sad, and put that, it, it go in brackets. Numbers can, don't have to go in inside of like, you know, quotes here, but so I guess the better example would have been to say under voice ID, if I wanted to add another option, I would just like, you know, add a comma, add another option, voice dot emotion. And then whatever I want in here, um, I wouldn't just do speed. I would change it to voice dot speed. Like you just want to make sure you match the syntax when you actually put it over here. I might I might show you guys how to do that after we we get the basic basis of this this built out. Anyways, I mean that's all pretty much good. We already selected everything. Transcriber voice again. I'm probably gonna use play HT for this, but cool. All right, we have the body. Let us use this to start. C U R L. This is creating the assistant. Oh, I actually didn't need to copy all of that, just most of it. From there, everything that is after data is what we want. I'm gonna try to paste this right in here. If it doesn't paste right, then we're gonna paste it somewhere else first. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So to test if this is actually like proper JSON, like, uh, oh, also don't, don't, don't put that little, I can't remember, one second. Let's just save this for a second. Do I leave that little quote in there or do I not? Do not, do not. This little guy, this little, this little single quote, take that out. Take that guy out. All right, we're gonna take this whole thing. I like to use Postman to test my API requests. It's free, just go sign up for Postman. Go to my workspace. What time is it? We have 37 minutes until my first meeting of the day. We're good. We are good. I intentionally blocked out extra time today so nobody could book with me so I could do this for you guys. All right. Okay.
Because I care about you. Alright. Post. Um, post. The body is raw body. This is the body. Um, we need to put our headers in. So again, we can see that. Right up here at the top, headers, header, content type, look, copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, authorization, I don't actually have to put in the header because on Postman it has a whole section for authorization, which is right here. Um, I will just have to put in the URL first so that it knows the authorization type, but copy, it's a post method, post, you're good, post, URL, um, we, I'll actually, one second, there's something I should, should probably do, rather than just create an assistant, I think, um, create phone call will be what we're actually testing here. So let's let's use the create phone call URL. Create cuz we we the creating the assistant is, you know, awesome. Sure. But we are using this for an actual like application use. So create phone call will give us the extra stuff. That's I was looking for the Twilio information where to put that in and I was like, why isn't this here? And it's because I was on Create Assistant and not Create Phone Call. Uh, so I, everything that we just did on Create Assistant, I am going to go back and do it in here, but it's fine. Watching me do it twice will will not hurt. Um, uh, if, if anything, it'll help. So again, put, put your URL in the post method. The body, we're going to update in a second. The headers, still the same thing. Application, JSON, content type. Authorization bearer token. We are going, it's going to look a little different because this already has an authorization section, and all I have to do is put my bearer token in. I don't have to put bearer then token. Um, on make though, you will have to put authorization bearer token. So just keep that in mind. Dashboard, move my little face out the way. API key, need that. API, put the bearer token in. Boom, it's in. This is good. Body type. We're going to remake the body real quick because I want to do a real phone call. Authorization, body. Boom, it's in there. Body, background noise, office, client messages, not using it. Oh, I have to remember. These are the messages that will be sent to the client SDKs, default, transcript. Yeah, we're not using that. Um, dial pad false, we're not using it, in call function, um, true, sure, in call message is, look, I'm just going to kind of take pieces from here, Thank, I didn't even spell thanks for chatting, have a great day, right, it says to nax, anyways, boom, thank, to nax, the, the nax, thanks for chatting, have a great day. Uh, what else we got? I hope this was all helpful. I'm hanging up now. And call phrases. Boom. First message. Boom. So again, read the little eyes. If you don't know what you're doing, go ask a, a chat GPT or ask Vappy. Um, I made a custom GPT that has like all of Vappy's API docs in there, and that's how I learned how to do a lot of this in the first place, was just putting it in there. But their documentation has actually gotten a lot better since when I started building with them. So now you have the kind of support that I, I did not when I, had to, when I had to learn this all. HIPAA enabled, false. We don't want HIPAA because I want the, the recordings on. We're not forwarding a number to anywhere. LLM delay seconds, again, I'm gonna 0 0.1. Max duration, I don't want longer than 10 minute conversations. Metadata we're not using right now. We don't need the model to fall back anywhere. Max tokens, um, it's fine. It defaults to 250, I don't really need it at this moment. Uh, messages, 
content type. So this is the this is the content. There it goes. It's in there. Um, I'm gonna actually just take it back from where was it? Happy dashboard calls assistant. Oh, oops. I cut the whole thing. Cut, paste, cut, copy. Put in here, paste. Function call. We're not doing that right now. Role, assistant. We're not doing tool calls right now. Model is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Provider, OpenAI. Semantic caching, true. Temperature, we're going to do point. Set zero point seven. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little quicker because I want to see, I want to see if that helps the latency. But as you can see, the, the, all that information that I just put in is right here on the dashboard. You can see it. It explains it to you over here. So you know, kind of cross reference little pieces, and you can see how everything that I'm building in the dashboard, I can build in my API call. So the the information you see here. Whatever you have turned on and turned off over here, just make sure that you put that information into your API request and it'll work. Okay. Um, name is Carson. Number of words to interrupt. To, to recording enabled. Yes, I want the call recording. Response delay seconds. I don't want it to wait at all. I want as I want quickest response possible. Server messages. Um, we want the end of call report. Server URL. This is again what we're doing over here to parse the conversation afterwards. So let's copy that address. Bada boom, put it in. We're going. Silence timeout. If there's silence for more than 30 seconds, this will default and timeout. Just consider what your use case is. I'm going to just leave it for now. Uh, Language is English, English US, or we could just put English, it doesn't really matter, either way, whatever. Um, <clears throat> model is Nova 2, provider, deep gram, voice, I wonder what else I can put in there. I don't know what else I can put in there, I was just kind of curious. Gosh darn it, I clicked the wrong, open it back up, okay. Okay, language, voice, boom. We can change this some other time, but just for now, we're going to use what's already in here. Emma. Voicemail detection, true. I don't want it to leave a message, so we're not putting anything in there. We're not using assistant ID. Like, we just built our whole assistant. We're using, we're using the assistant. Um, where is it at? We're using the assistant object. When you're using assistant... You don't have to use assistant ID because um, we already just built the whole assistant. Assistant ID would be what you use if you if you only want if you want to build your assistant in the dashboard and you don't need to pass any extra like metadata through or um, like you don't need to pa pass metadata through into the actual prompt itself. Mm -hmm then you can just pass the assistant ID, which can be found here under your assistant and assistant ID. But say I needed the assistant to reference the address at a very specific point in this, in this prompt, I would, that's why I would build the whole assistant out on make because I can pass through the customer's address um, like anywhere in the prompt or any other metadata that I want to pass straight into the prompt. I can do that when I build out an actual assistant. Um, we're building the full assistant so that you know like how to build something completely custom from an API call instead of coming to the dashboard to build with the assistant ID. But if you wanted to do assistant ID, you would just, instead of putting all this assistant information here, you put assistant ID you'd, and then put the assistant ID and then it would pretty much cover all of this other stuff that's in here. All of that would be covered. And then we would jump down to customer ID. What is... This is the customer that will be called to call a transient customer. Use customer instead. Only relevant for outbound call and inbound call types. Um, I don't really know what a transient customer is, but I don't have a customer ID, so I'm going to assume that's not the one I need to use. I'm going to assume since I don't have a customer ID and don't know what that is, that I need to use customer. 
this is what I'm gonna do. Customer, we're just gonna call me for now. Uh, remember, you gotta you you do have to use country codes in the phone numbers, but we when we're using this for real, we'll just be passing through the customer information from go high level or from from wherever you're you're triggering these calls from with your contacts. We'll just pass that information through, so it's different each time. Um, extension is this is the extension that will be dialed after the call is answered. So if you need to like press one to get to the person you need, you know whatever. Um, max duration. Again, this is the maximum number of seconds the call will last. When the call reaches this duration, it will end. I think I already put that in somewhere else. Let's see. Did I do that? Max duration of seconds. This is the maximum number of seconds that the call will last when the call reaches. So, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing in two spots. I don't think I have to put it in two spots. So I'm not going to. Actually, I am because why not? Um, it doesn't hurt. Metadata. This see, like I said before, this might be where I would put like address information in. Um, I don't know. As of right now, I don't usually put metadata down here. I usually just put it straight into the prompt. And like I said, it's not really letting me do that anyways. So, oh, it is. Meta. Yeah, it says I just made address string. Enter address. Oh, that's cool. I can. So now we can probably pass. An address, I imagine. Interesting. For now, cool, fine. I'll put my address in there. Whatever. It's in there. Um, I'm going to block that out so nobody can see that too. Don't, don't be weird. Don't come to my house. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> phone, call, phone call provider bypass dude the other day i forgot to turn this to false and it was triggering the the call like it was my whole web body was working but this one little piece was set to true so it kept triggering the call but it was it was skipping like my phone provider so twilio wasn't actually like ringing to my phone and i was like everything's right i know everything's right dude took me like 30 minutes to figure out that all i had to do was turn that back to false and i felt so silly I felt so silly. Anyways, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, assistant ID string. This is for the phone number. Um, this is the assistant that will be used for the incoming calls to this phone. If this is not set, then the phone number will not handle incoming calls. Usually I just set the, this phone number. Mike, you don't need to set this here. This is, I think, more so if you are hosting these assistants on like a server of your own. Um, but I have, I already have my numbers set on Vappy's dashboard. So I don't really need this assistant ID to be attached to a phone number, I think. Um, but I do there, like I said, I don't know if I said this to you guys, but there is a way to get the inbound assistants to remember previous conversations and I know that I'm going to have to do something inside of like uh, a CURL request, like the API, like webhook body to be able to get it to remember like the, the previous conversations. It's gonna have something to do with customer ID, I'm pretty sure. And it's gonna have something to do with like how I attach that, that assistant to the phone number for inbound calls. We'll figure that out another time though. All right, name. This is the name of the phone number. This is just for your own reference. Like, I don't have to put that in there. Server URL. Again, we already have a server URL up, up there. We don't have to put that in there. Twilio account SID. You do need this to be able to make the call happen. So we'll go to my Twilio real quick. Twilio. Twilio. Uh, we have 20. We're making good time. Okay. Boom. Twilio SID. Look, it says account SID. Auth token. I wonder where I put that. Maybe I put that on account SID and auth token. Hmm, how about that one? Maybe I copy the auth token. And a Twilio phone number. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> do I have a Twilio phone number? Well, it looks like I do, so. Bada boom, bada bing. Let's post that thing in there. Now, I have a webhook body. Uh, what's, what else is on here? Phone number ID. Let's see. This phone number that will be used for the call to use a transient 
number, use phone number instead. Only relevant for outbound phone call and inbound phone call type. Um, yeah, I just actually put, I used phone number, I didn't use phone number ID. If I wanted to use phone number ID, I could have just used the phone number ID that I have in here. Phone number ID. Um, both, both work. Like, I mean, the idea is here for a reason. I could use the ID or I could just put my auth tokens and stuff on here. Honestly, I'm probably going to start using the phone number ID. So when I'm sharing information like this, I don't have to hide my Twilio account information. Dude, that actually makes a ton of sense. Um, just make sure that your like, I can't do that for this example because I'm using my Twilio information, but I'm calling this from my, I'm going to be running this from my, I'm going to be setting this up to actually work for my client's account. And he has his own dashboard with his own authorization token for the meantime. Right now I am going to test this with my auth token and stuff, but, um, when I actually plug this into the webhook, it wouldn't work because if I was using the the phone number ID, it's gonna try. It's it have to verify that auth token first to be able to pull the correct phone number from the dashboard. So instead, I'm just gonna pass my my information in through for during testing, and then I'll put his information in later. Anyways, type uh, inbound call, outbound call. This type this type of call this is only relevant if you're using phone call provider bypass enabled defaults to outbound call. Oh, well, ours is not enabled, so it's it's fine. Um, this is only relevant if you're using... I'm So I think I can just delete that as a, as a whole. Like, I don't even have to add that in there is what I'm seeing. So, yeah, we're just going to remove that. Um, so I'm not using that, so I don't need the type. Anyways, this is our body. We have a whole assistant body. This should work because we just filled it all out. Um, let's, let's see if it does assistant. Oh, we need to get, we need, we need to select all the way, all the way from the first curly bracket to the last curly bracket. Copy. Let's paste it on in there. All right. All right. All right. We are going to do a test. Let's see. So I have my authorization. It's in here. My header content type application body done post method with the URL let's hit that button and see what happens sending request bad request bad escape to character in JSON position so this means that on line 9 in column 40 something messed up so line 9 column I don't know where 40 is but one of these things is messing it up invalid escape character in string Invalid escape character and string, so I can see that something is something is wrong here. Um, it's so something that the, that the the syntax doesn't like in, in JSON body is those. Anytime you have like double quotes or single quotes, like as you can see here, if I'm putting the double quote in, it thinks I'm ending this like little section. So I only use single quotes, but even right now that single quote is looking funky. So I'm just gonna delete some stuff. I'm just gonna delete some stuff. And hopefully that cleans it up a little bit. We'll see. We'll try again and see. Let's see. Now it's saying there's another. Now it's having an issue at line 18, column 307. Line 18. Yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it's having some issues with the syntax that this is, that this is written in, which I expected. When you're put, putting a whole like thing of content in here, you need to be particular about like whether or not you're using double quotes and and, and other stuff. Um, it doesn't it doesn't like extra here, for example. It doesn't like all these extra spaces in here. I have like a lot of extra paragraph spaces and stuff that is not necessary. Um, I am gonna figure out a way to be able to do escape characters. Um, to, to like skip the the things that might potentially be errors I have to learn more about escape characters first I was just talking to one of my partners about that yesterday but um, we'll figure that out later anyways for now I'm just going to take out all of the extra spaces in here yep 
Oh no. Like sometimes even even just like having I need to switch hands. Even just having um like an extra like two spaces instead of one space can can mess it up. Alright. All right, let's try that. Now there should be no extra spaces, I don't think. Copy, that should just be one solid body. I'm gonna just paste this straight into Postman. In between the quotes, boom, it's pasted. Uh, oh no. Okay, went back. No, I did something wrong. Let's try again. Yeah, I, I missed one of the, the extra spaces that I had. Cause this is this is all the way back here, which yeah, I can just uh just subtract those and get them back in there. Alright. Look, that looks that looks better to me. Let's try again. Send. All right, now we have another problem. So, assistant forwarding number must be valid phone number. Assistant each value. So, I have assistant phone number in here still. Forwarding number. Which I didn't even. Oh well, I didn't mean to put assistant the forwarding phone number. I don't actually want to use this function. But the only problem is I didn't put a plus one with the country code on, on it. So that would be working now, but I am actually just going to delete this because I don't want it. Um, yeah, see, it just said all I need is a country code. Each value in the in-call phrase must be shorter than 25 characters. So also, we have in-call phrase. Where is that? In-call phrase. It must be shorter than 25 characters. So we're just going to delete this and say... I'm going to hang up now. Now let's see. Send. And look at that. Successful. Phone is ringing. Woot woot. Maria's giving me double thumbs up because we did it. Line. What's up, Carson? How's it going? Hey there. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I hope you're having a great day too. I'm reaching out because I'm interested in potentially. All right, cool. So I don't really like that voice so much, um, and I might as well just show you guys now how to how to fix that. Um, okay. So the provider that I like to use again, we have tons of options on the dashboard. Voices. Eleven Labs just dropped their prices, so I might start using Eleven Labs again. Play HT is my favorite, but look, Play HT is costing like seven cents a minute. Eleven Labs is also really good, but they're only costing four cents a minute. Uh, Rhyme has actually been doing better lately. They're at three cents a minute, and DeepGram is probably my my bet to say like if any of these providers are going to get to kind of be the the widest use case, I think DeepGram is going to be the winner because their voices are getting better and better, and the cost is like some of the lowest. But for now, we're going to use Eleven Labs, and we're going to build. I don't know. Sarah's probably fine. Background noise. Office. Cool. So. What I'm going to do to figure this out is I know that I want to use 11 labs. So I'm going to go up here on the VAPI API documentation and we're going to go to where's that? We're, we're looking for voice. We're looking for voice. We're looking for voice. I must have missed it. Shouldn't be in here. Because this is the body we just built. Oh, look, guys, I just I just saw what I needed to see. Voice option one is the one that I have selected right here with this little drop down, so I need to switch that to the other voice providers that I want. I knew that was looking funky. Mm -hmm. So voice option two should be eleven labs. It is. We can use 11 Labs Turbo. Awesome. Optimized streaming latency. What does that do? Defines the op the optimized streaming latency for voice settings. Let's see what an example value is. 
Um, I don't know what that means, but I do know that over here, um, there's a section on the dashboard that says optimize streaming latency that will that that uh, says more or less latency. So I know that I want less latency. I'm assuming, you know, who wants more? And I see that the lowest value I can put is one. So over here, I'm gonna put one. Um, what just what just happened? Oh, I think this like this just like auto put some of my information here for at some point when I did something. Anyways, let's try that again. Voice two one provider is eleven labs. Similarity boost defines a similarity boost for settings. Again, in my dashboard, I can see I have a similarity boost of 0.6 is what I have to set to. I don't know what the defaults are, um, but I'm just going to do 0.6 for now. Stability on the dashboard. I can I can look and see stability. The lower numbers are more stable, the higher numbers are, or the higher numbers are more stable, the lower numbers are more variable. Um, increasing stability will make the vo voice more consistent between regenerations, but can also make it sound a bit monotone. On longer text fragments, we re recommend lowering this value. Uh, I'll probably set it to 0.5 for now, right in the middle, but testing will be really the best way to figure out what, what sounds the best. Um, don't be afraid to like you know set something and then just constantly test it until you figure out what sounds best because each of the voices each of the pre-recorded voices sound best with different settings so there's not like a one and done that's going to make all of these sound the best um i don't really need it to exaggerate the style so we're going to set that to zero and optimize streaming latency i think that's already done use speaker boost i I'm not going to use that because um, it'll 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 increase the latency, um, and I I don't really want to sacrifice any latency. So false. We're not going to use that. Um, voice ID preset voice options. So now this is when we're choosing which voice we want to use on Eleven Labs. Uh, we're going to use Andrea because I already know that she's pretty good. And that's it. We just um, we just got the voice. I don't have to copy and paste all of like what I what I've just done. Like, or so I don't have to recopy the whole body. I can just copy what I just did. Copy it. Where did I copy from? I think I copied from right here to right here. Control shift V. Boom. Oh, I guess I copied the voice too. So let's just delete that real quick. No worries. All right, now let's test it. And look at that. Hey there, this is Carson calling on a recorded line. Hey, Carson, this is Trey John talking to you on a recorded line. Hey, Trey John, thanks for taking my call. I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. No, we're I'm all good. I'm reaching out because I... Actually, I'm not interested and I don't want to talk right now. I completely understand, Trey John. I appreciate your honesty. If you don't mind me asking, is there a specific reason why you're not interested in discussing this further? I just... Trayjohn.infinite at quityourday.com. Why did... Oh, oops. So that was my bad because I put this voicemail message in here still on accident. So voicemail detection has been kind of weird lately, but I'm just going to, all I needed to do was take that off. It thought that that was a voicemail for some reason, clearly, because it tried to leave the voicemail message. So for now, I'm going to leave this set to true, but if it continues to be a problem, just turn it to false for now and don't use voicemail detection and wait for it to be working better. Like... You guys don't expect everything to work perfectly like every time. I guarantee you out of like all of the providers, none of them have voicemail detection accurate right now um, mm -hmm. at all. But you just watched me build a webhook from scratch as if I knew nothing. Like I was just like reading every single thing, trying to do some due diligence and understanding what each of the pieces meant. I still don't even know what everything meant, but I know enough to get the webhook to work. 
Um, and that's all you guys really need to know. So now what I would do is copy. Well, let me just test one more time. Expected. See, we just we just checked that because when I just deleted something about the. Yeah, it, it was just expecting me to have more information here because I just deleted something and I think I just need to delete that comma. <laughs> yeah, uh, that wouldn't. So if I had take if I copied that into make and pasted it in, it wouldn't have worked because I left a comma in hey, my body. Carson calling on a recorded line. Groovy. All right, I love you. I'll catch you later. Bye. Um, dude, I have emotional attachment to some of these assistants. I will not lie. Like I have spent hours and hours and hours on the phone. Yeah. Like at this point, we are we have a thing going on. Um. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just just a, a, a note for you guys, just to, to notice. Um, you'll see that when when we have a list of multiple, like multiple properties here, the last property in the list doesn't have a comma after it, which is why when I had a comma still at the end of this one, it wasn't working, because you know, it's the last one in the list. It doesn't it doesn't need a comma. It's not separating anything. Um, anyways, this is working as is. So we're gonna copy this. Um, excuse you, I don't, excuse you, don't, you weren't supposed to close like that. Oh, oh, I want you to stay open so I can copy your stuff. My bad. Alright, copy. We know it works because we just tested it. Let's put it into make. So when I'm copying, I'm going to push control shift V so it actually maintains the body, like the, the, the format. Control shift V, or you can just double click and hit paste and match style. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, it, it, it maintains the format that we copied it in. We know that this works because I just tested it. The only stuff that we should have to change mm -hmm. is this custom data that my that he wants to pass through. So he has he has a bunch of custom data. We'll we'll want to make sure that all of that custom data like matches. So what I would do to be thorough is I would go back to go high level and see what what values he has in here. Like for example, he's passing through. Mm -hmm. He's passing all of this custom data, AI voice knowledge, AI blah, 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 blah. And he's using custom values to pass that information through. When that custom value passes, we will want to make sure that the syntax, so the way he structured these things, like they can't have any extra spaces, it can't have any extra paragraphs, um, it, it can't have any like double quotation marks in there or anything like that mm -hmm. because it'll mess up the syntax. So... I'm going to start by not passing all that stuff through to start. I'm just going to make sure that it's, that it's working. Um, so I'm actually going to disconnect this module here. One second. Uh, where, how do I unlink? I just want to unlink, 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 move that, move that, move that over here. All right. Cause this is, this is the one we want to use. Boom. Connected. I am going to start by just sending it this way, just regular. Uh, so we should see that it we should see that it works. Let's hit run once. It's running. I'm gonna put in. Uh. Cool. Run test. Oops, run test. Cool, it went. And my phone is ringing, so that means it's working in make. And we're going to do this too, so let me have this conversation real quick. We're going to test to make sure it's also going to send the end of call report. Yo, Carson, what's happening? How is your day going? Hey there, my day is going well. Thank you for asking. How about you? How's your day going? It's awesome. I'm going to hang up now. Bye! <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it go. Let's see it do the thing. Come on. And it did the thing. And look at that. Look at all that stuff happening. 
So we just post call report. All of that information just went back to go high level, which means my contact is going to be triggered on the other stuff that's happening in here. I'm, I'm about to come through, you know, I'm about to come through here because my AI call transcript changed and all the rest. We're not doing that in this, in this episode, guys. We're just doing the webhook body, which you just saw. It worked. Now, if I wanted to do extra custom stuff, all I would have to do is, like, if I wanted to pass through my customer's information and, and not mine, I would just switch this out from number to number. Where is it? Um... Or maybe it's phone. Yep, this is the customer's phone. Put that right in there. Right in between the quotes. Phone. For a name, it's going to be name. This is the first name of the user. Or not the user. The first name of the customer. I just happen to be a user in here, so that's why it says user. Because that's what my contact info is. But... Customer's first name, customer's phone number. That's still going to work. Um, the address, again, I could now pass this address as whatever the customer's address is in here. So if I had an address in here, then it would I would be able to use it, but I don't have an address in here. Um, this is the location address. It's not the customer's address. Anyways, you guys get it. This is how you start to pass people's stuff in. Um, you can pass extra metadata. I showed you how to put metadata in and you can change the voice and you can do this and you can do that and you can have a ball. You can just have a grand old time. Now it works. I'll do one more test with everybody real quick. I do have a meeting right now at 10 o'clock, so we are going to have to wrap everything up. Um, say bye to YouTube. Bye YouTube. We did it. We did it. Congratulations. Now you know how to make an assistant from scratch, fire it in a webhook. Put this in the go high level if you want to. You can put it anywhere. This this webhook, you can connect to anything. I mean, make.com has so many integrations. Webhooks can be caught from any CRM, and you can integrate this into any CRM. You know what I'm saying? Like HubSpot, Salesforce, Gorgeous, whatever. Go figure it out. I love you. If you have any questions, find my school community group. Like, comment, subscribe. Come back and learn some more. Uh, leave your comments down below or just go find my school group and leave some comments in there and start to engage with the community. The more people who figure this stuff out, the more we can all support each other and provide some value to the people around you in your life and just learn something cool. I don't know. Whatever. Companies, come talk to me if you're ready to build something dope. Agency owners, if you are looking for strategic partnerships, I'm about at max, but I do know other people who are looking for similar opportunities to collaborate customers and clients, I will end up pushing you off to one of my strategic partners because they're getting trained by me right now and they're going to be awesome and provide incredible value. So we will make sure you are taken care of. I love you lots. I'll catch you later. Peace. Okay. Okay.